Alright, so let's talk about muscle weakness and pain. There's four pathologies that I want you to know about that can cause this. And so let's start with the first one. We're going to break it down. I want to focus a lot on the names and pathophysiologies here. So polymyalgia rheumatica. First of all, rheumatica makes you really think of like rheumatoid arthritis with stiffness. And then myalgia is pain. So this is what it is. It's an inflammatory disorder with stiffness and more than pain in the proximal muscles. Note that there is no weakness here. And there's no mention of weakness in the name. It's a it's a stiffness and pain disorder. You see this a lot in old women. So that's another thing to note. Elderly women, you also see a lot of times you'll see systemic symptoms like fever and uh, malaise. And this is often associated with giant cell temporal arthritis. So what you'll usually hear about is someone with say like headaches and difficulty chewing and like stiffness in the proximal muscles then you really want to worry about giant cell arthritis do you remember what you do for that when I mean, you got to get that well first of all you got to hit them with steroids and then you get a temporal biopsy and the way you diagnose uh, focusing back on polymyalgia rheumatica itself the way you diagnose it is you see increased inflammatory markers remember it's inflammatory disease so ESR, CRP are increased, and CK is normal. Whereas CK is a marker of muscle damage. There's no muscle damage, hence no weakness, but you do see inflammatory markers. So again, it's going to respond to anti-inflammatories like glucocorticoids. So remember, inflammatory disorder is very key, very important. The next one is fibromyalgia. Again, from the name, myalgia, pain. So this is a neuropsychiatric disorder. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, basically the thought is that fibromyalgia is due to abnormal central processing, so processing in the brain of painful stimuli. So it's going to lead to your brain thinking, telling your body, telling yourself that you have a lot of widespread pain. You have associated symptoms like sleep, fatigue, concentration, depression problems. And these are all neuropsychiatric symptoms, so it's very simple. Um, and then another key thing is there will be multiple tender points. So you press them on different parts of the body and they'll be tender. And the thing is, it's normal lapse. Again, it all stems from neuropsychiatric disorders. Nothing wrong with the muscles itself, we think. We think it's due to abnormal processing in the brain. Next is polymyositis. So inflammation of muscles, inflammation of many muscles, okay? And the thing is, so inflammation, and it's autoimmune leading to inflammation, so you get proximal muscle weakness. So things like shoulders, hips, so you have problems raising your arms, brushing your hair. Um, so you get some muscle damage in this one, so you get increased creatine kinase. Remember, it's an autoimmune disorder, so there are positive autoantibodies that you want to be aware of. It's ANA, anti joe um, anti-SRP, anti-ME2. Unfortunately, these you would have to memorize, so please do memorize this. And the biopsy will show patchy necrosis and endomycel, which is within the muscle fiber inflammation, uh, with CD, uh, CD8 T cells, I think. CD8. So that's something you have to memorize. So it's endomycel inflammation um, with CD8 T cells. In contrast, we have dermatomyositis, which is exact, the exactly same thing as polymyositis, except we have skin symptoms, hence the name dermatomyositis. So the skin symptoms, I want to show you in the next page. You're going to have a heliotrope rash, which is a rash of the upper eyelids. You're going to have gotron papules, so the little red papules on the, on the fingers and the joints. And you have a shawl sign. So this is a shawl. So this is a rash in that distribution. So these are the skin findings you'll see with dermatomyositis. Um, again, you'll see the same autoantibodies because it's an autoimmune disorder leading to inflammation. The difference on the biopsy is that it's a perimyceal inflammation, and you're going to see CD4 T cells. So dermatomyositis has CD4, so you can remember that by dermatomyositis. And then... Um, with CD4 C cells. Okay, so that's it for muscle pain and weakness. Remember, just really focus on the names. The names will tell you everything. So the names are really important. Um, and then the pathophysiology, which I've underlined, is really important. And it's going to show you the pathophysiology and the names are going to tell you everything about how it's going to present and the labs and diagnosis.